Welcome, welcome. This is the Enlightenment Show, and I'm your host, Laurie Schoenfeld. This is where Chicken Soup for the Soul meets the artist way with Nancy Drew. Our guest today is Hilary Hansen, culinary chef and owner of Blissful Bites. We're going to be chatting with her today all about her business and what some of her favorite magical dishes to make are. Welcome, Hillary. Well, thank you so much for having me. So fun to be here. Absolutely. I love that I figured out this fun piece about you that you also love sunflowers as well. Yes. Yes. And in fact, this was the first year that I living here in Utah, I've been here for going on four years. So <clears throat> this was the first year that I actually planted some in my backyard. And what's crazy is I only got my first sunflower bloom um, just the other day in my yard, but I do work at a garden and he, his sunflowers are going crazy. And so that was so funny that day I posted and you posted something <laughs> as well. And they're so, they're just growing wild. They're magical, right? They're, they're beautiful flowers. They're, they're happy. They make me happy. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're definitely happy. I'm excited that you have your first sunflowers in your yard too. I'm sure that's fun to see. Yes. Yeah, it's fun. I planted a garden this year. Um, my husband says it's a magical garden. I really am not a gardener at heart. I just, this year I thought I'm going to be, you know, kind of diverse. I'm going to plant things together. Like I've got beets in one area and then right behind it, I've got some carrots and some squash and, and things are growing like crazy and I can't even see the carrots anymore. But I think <laughs> in a way they kind of all like each other and they talk to each other and they're just doing amazing. My garden's doing amazing, which, so I'm going to have to try to remember how I did it next, you know, next year, this year. <laughs> That's half the battle when you create yeah. something magical. Yes. That's true. <laughs> Can you share with our listeners and viewers what inspired you to create Blissful Bites? Yes. Um, so actually, uh, I was I was working um, back in, I want to say 2007, probably from 2002 um, to about 2007, I was working in sales and I sold cheerleading uniforms <laughs> and I was living in California. I um, traveled up and down the coast from like Bakersfield to Modesto. I lived in Fresno. My husband's family um, farmed in that area. And one of my best friends had told me about a job um, selling cheerleading uniforms. And I had been, a I was a cheerleader, um, I'll admit it. And so, and I loved it. I did it mostly because, you know, for the athleticism I was, did, you know, all the stunting and I loved that part of it. And, um, and I, so anyway, when she said, do you want to sell cheerleading uniforms? I thought, Hey, that, that might be fun. Well, it was really lucrative. Um, you know, I was, I was amazed at, you know, how much money you could make, but it was also a really stressful job. And I, you know, I'd be on the road. I, I, you know, a lot of the time and, and it was a season where everybody ordered their uniforms, you know, from April to June. So that was like, and then they got their uniforms like between, you know, June and, and July, August, and then September, you know, is when school starts. And so it was just really like six months of huge stress. And, um, and only because, you know, a cheerleading uniform is so diverse. Like how, you know, you have how many schools they want their stripes this way, their lettering this color. I mean, it was just, and I'd have to input that and I'd have to go out and fit all these girls. So it was really, it was just a lot of um, elements to this job. But I mean, it was fun and it taught me a lot, um, taught me a lot about sales and I did really well. You know, like the first year I was rookie of the year, it was like, Great. And then um, it just started taking a toll on me and my, I feel like my health. And I, you know, I kept doing it because, again, it was lucrative. But my husband and I were um, trying to get pregnant. And this was I was around, you know, so we got married at 33 and we, try, you know, we started trying, you know, pretty much right out of the gate. And, you know, three years just not getting pregnant. I was like, you know, what's happening? So we went we saw. Um, 
an infertility specialist and, you know, I had some issues with, you know, re reproduction. And basically I was told, you know, you're probably not going to get pregnant unless you do in vitro. Mm -hmm. And so we were like, okay, well, if this is the only way, then maybe we should go this route. So we ended up, um, signing up to, you know, to go do this in San Francisco. So we drove up to San Francisco because our doctor recommended going through this special doctor. And so we drove up there, you know, to do it and we started the, the progress of it. And, um, and so on the way, just, I'm just going to put this in uh, one, one trip, we went to Santa Cruz and we kind of drove up and I had seen this advertisement for culinary school and, I don't, I've always been a lover of food. So I just, I saw that little advertisement and I took it and I stuck it in my back pocket. Cause I was like, Oh no, I, you know, I have a job, but Hey, you know, this kind of looks interesting. So anyway, so we went up, we did, uh, we went through the in vitro and we had no luck. We had no success. I think I had two viable eggs um, and one didn't work out and the other one was, you know, implanted. And, you know, I remember getting the phone call of, you know, it, it happened or not. And it didn't. And so it was um, really, it was, it was heartbreaking. And I was like, Oh my gosh. But at the time I thought, you know, kind of right before it, I thought, you know what, I just don't think I want to have the stress of my job um, while I'm going through this process. And so I quit <laughs> and I, you know, so I was, it kind of enjoying and doing things that I hadn't done. Like I was doing a meditation class um, and kind of right before, and I started seeing an acupuncturist for fertility. And in mm -hmm. my mind, I was like, you know what? I, I don't, I still believe I can get pregnant. Like, like I still was like, I'm, I'm going to get pregnant. I just, I'm going to keep trying. I'm not going to give up. And so I was trying to go a more holistic route and it's weird how things happen. You know, I had a gal, I met a friend one day and she was having lunch and she had told me about an acupuncturist who, um, this book and this acupuncturist that she was seeing for fertility. And so um, I called her up and started reading this book. And I started reading about food in this book, a lot about food and its healing properties. And then, so I was kind of doing all these things, acupuncture. And, and so I had that kind of in my back pocket as well. But when I didn't get pregnant, um, I just thought, what, what am I going to do now? You know, I just quit my really stressful job that I made a lot of money at and I put away a lot of money. And so I went back to that little piece of paper that had the, um, the, the school on it. And I said, honey, what, what would you think if I were to go to culinary school? And at the time I was 40 and he just kind of looked at me. He's like, well, if you're going to do it, you better do it now. And so he, um, so what we decided to do, so it was in Santa Cruz and I, again, I had saved a lot of money so I could pay for the school. And we rented a place in Santa Cruz. It was just like a seven month program. And so I would be there through the week and he'd come over on the weekends and we, um, you know, I just made it work. And so I was, was doing this school and the school is called Bowman College, if anybody's interested. Um, and it's, it's a natural chef, natural food program, culinary program. And they have, you know, they had this hands on cute little space. It was very, it was like in a strip mall, but, you know, it wasn't, you know, your big culinary schools. It was just very different, but there was something about it that just, I connected with. And I was like, okay, I'm going to learn about food in a different way. And I'm going to learn how to prepare it in a different way. And so I enrolled within, you know, like literally a month and we rented a place. We found a place. I mean, like it said, things just aligned. And um, I started taking this course and I was eating this beautiful, magical food daily. And if, if you've ever been to Santa Cruz or like, you know, Northern California, that area in the Central Valley, it's just the bread basket, you know, of America. And they just grow the most beautiful food. And especially in, in Santa Cruz and kind of Monterey in those areas, they have lots of farms. And so I was going to farmers markets and just kind of eating in a whole different way than I had before. And... I was still doing meditation. I was walking my dogs every day. Um, and I was uh, doing acupuncture. So I was kind of, you know, all these things and the stars aligned and I got pregnant. 
so I, it, you know, it was like, I was probably, it's probably like three months into the program. And so then I was like, oh my gosh, you know, and my, all my classmates were like, oh my, you know, we can't believe it. You know? And I was like, I, you know, it must be the food. The food is just magical. So, you know, my whole kind of thesis at the end, cause we had to, you know, we, we learned about how food is healing. So we learned about all different modalities, you know, from cancer to, you know, autoimmune disease, celiac disease, all these different, um, things and how food could be healing. And so I realized that I have had an maybe an autoimmune disease or I wasn't eating the way I should because one in six people, I was just telling you, is infertile. And that may, that may be, you know, dropping. I don't know. But we're, you know, it was just, it made me realize that, you know, not only is food healing, but there's, if you want something in life, don't stop. Don't give up. Don't, you know, it's just like, th that was just my mantra. Like, you know, I'm going to, I'm, I'm still going to try, even though this guy says I'm never going to get pregnant, this doctor, which, you know, that's why sometimes I stay away from, you know, Western medicine, because mm -hmm. I just learned that I can't, I'm, I can heal, you know, on my own. And I know that Western medicine is great for a lot of things, but um, I had definitely taken a different path for myself and for my daughter. So yeah, we, I got pregnant. I had, I ended up, you know, finishing school. I came out of there and did, you know, some chefing for a couple different clients. I had a lady who had Crohn's disease and I cooked for her. I had a gal who, um, she just had really bad digestive issues. And so cooked for her. And then I cooked for a married couple. One was a v vegetarian and the other one was ate meat. So that was really interesting, but I learned a lot, you know, and then I just got to the point where I couldn't wash dishes and stand, but my daughter came a little bit early. She, Sienna, she's now 14 and she was, you know, she came a little bit early. I just think I, you know, I still had, had some, you know, issues, but yeah, it's just quite a blessing. And so once again, I, the food aspect definitely plays a part, but, um, and I still try to think of, about this today that, it wasn't just that it was, you know, being connected, I think with nature and believing and knowing that I still could get pregnant, you know, that was just my belief. And I don't, I don't know, it was magic. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's kind of how I got involved in the chefing part. And anyway, after I had her, I kind of took a break. I was, um, for about two years, I didn't really, I got involved with a, a group called the Weston A. Price Foundation. And the reason why is because when I found out I was pregnant, I um, was really, really concerned that I was going to miscarry because that's, I had had a miscarriage. I'd had an ectopic pregnancy. So I just went to this little health food store and there just happened to be an acupuncturist. She was just volunteering, working, um, working that day. And she, like, I said, I'm so concerned, like, what can I do? I just don't want to lose this baby again. And, um, she like handed me this book. It was called nourishing traditions. It's still called nourishing traditions. Um, but it talks about really how to nourish your body. And so I, you know, and so she's like, you need to eat, you know, like eggs are really good. You know, I mean, you should start eating eggs. And she gave me, and I know this is going to sound crazy, but she gave me liver capsules and she's like, and liver is one of the most nutrient dense foods. And a lot of people it's, I'm, and, you know, I've been working at this little, another little farm where they sell all these meats, but I'm telling you, people are buying liver in droves. It's now becoming very popular because of its nutrient dense value. So, I mean, I, I was like, okay, you know, and I, and I, and I'm now, I now eat liver. I don't eat in, in huge quantities, but I eat a little bit every day and I eat, you know, lots of, um, you know, I like raw milk and things that really will are things that our great grandparents used to eat, you know, mm -hmm. and they live such long lives, but they started out with all these, um, amazing foods that hadn't, hadn't been tainted by, you know, pesticides and all these things. So, and they were eating, you know, the beef and the liver and the whole parts of the cow. And I mean, it even goes back further than that, you know, to different tribes. But anyway, I could get into that all day long. But, um, but this book, Nourishing Traditions, was really fabulous because it talked about how to like learn how to culture and make your own sauerkraut and all sorts of things, make your own Gatorade. And it was just, and so 
I saw the book, I looked at it and in the back, it had a recipe for baby formula. And that is one thing that, um, I didn't, you know, six months into having Sienna, I didn't have a lot of breast milk and I really, you know, I looked at the back of the can of the, you know, baby formula, but formula that the hospital gave me. And I was like, I just don't know if I can give after going to this culinary school and just learning about how, you know, food is so healing and there's, you know, the processing of food. I was just like, I just don't think I can give my daughter this. So I decided to make her a homemade baby formula. And I, um, for, for the next, you know, 12 months, she, it was like a, a baby formula. It was made from raw milk and it had all sorts of other things in it. And, I made it every other day <laughs> and it had a little cod liver oil in it. And that was the other thing that the, uh, the acupuncturist had told me to take, take cod liver oil, all these things that, you know, our great, our grandparents took and our great grandparents took. And um, so I, I just inherently, I felt like she like knew what she was talking about. And I started taking these things and, and, you know, I, f I felt good. I was like, I maybe I'm just not nourishing myself with the things I haven't nourished myself with the things that I've needed for a long time. I've lived off coffee in the morning until two o'clock and then on the road. And, you know, maybe I'd like, if I were trying to think I'd eat healthy, I'd go grab a like chicken at, and, you know, and <laughs> eat a whole chicken on the road, you know, just wasn't, it was just not nourishing myself or my body. So anyway, fed Sienna um, and she's amazing. She's like healthy. I, you know, she, so that's, you know, that's kind of my story and that's where food has led me. But two years, um, I got a job working at a Whole Foods market. They had a culinary center. It was not successful. And when I came in, they were just like, oh, maybe you could like, you know, do a few classes here and there. And, you know, I was like, okay, you know, I'll, I'll do it. I had no, you know, I, I teaching was like, not necessarily my forte, but I was like, oh, you know, okay, I'll do it. And that's kind of where my, where I talk about my mantra is like, feel the fear and do it anyway. Um, I just, I stepped into it and I ended up loving it. And I felt passionate about what I was teaching. And in turn, it was just, it was a great connection, a great connection with people. And so for the next eight years I taught and the sec the program became very, very successful. And then we left <laughs> and came to Utah in 2018. I guess I was like at the height of my, you know, career there. And, and um, you know, Amazon bought, it, bought out Whole Foods and kind of everything changed. And even my manager was like, Hillary, you, you know, I know, you know, he, cause I was like, maybe I'll go to Utah and I'll do it or wherever I end up. Um, we talked about going to Hawaii when we were leaving, but, um, and that's another story. But anyway, we came here and and then he's like, you know, even if you don't go back to Whole Foods, you kind of left at the height of your career. So when I came here, I was like kind of dabbling with, oh, maybe I'll try to do it. But it kind of in the end, Amazon came out, took, took over and then all that, all those cooking schools kind of went away, which is pretty sad. But um, and then I just had to figure out what I was going to do here. And, you know, I just that was my what am I going to do? You know, I just, and for a little while, I just kind of took some time off for me and enjoyed being here, but eventually I got involved in, you know, some local farms and, and then 2020 hit. And a lot of the people that I'd cooked for back in California, businesses called and said, can you come in and teach? And, um, over zoom. And I was like, okay, you know, so <laughs> it ended up working out and I, and I'm doing, I do some classes here and there with a couple businesses and I have, um, I have a, you know, I do personal chefing if you need me. Um, you know, I do a little catering here and there. And so it's fun. I'm just, I'm kind of dabbling right now and trying to fi find my way. And I guess my dream would to be have a little, another culinary center here in Utah to teach and, um, you know, a big passion is to, I really, you know, my daughter's age, she's 14. I really would love to get kids, children to learn to cook mm -hmm. and start from a young age and, to, you know, implement, you know, what's good for their bodies. And, you know, I know there's some programs here, which is kind of fun, but I, that's, that's something that's, that's sort of a dream. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. I love this conversation a lot, Hillary, because just kind of talking about 
both of our journeys before the show, I had a mess on my vocal cords and couldn't yes. talk for 14 months on and off. And so the thing that actually helped quite a bit was they recommended that I go on a GERD diet, which is like no fried foods, like no high fat, no seasoning, like really like the healthy whole grain fruits and veggies type of a diet. And that for me was interesting because it was so different than what I had been eating. Yeah. So I had like this almost emotional loss with food, which was interesting to gain my awareness of, I didn't know I actually held emotionally to food as much as I had until I was like, that's what you need to be on now. So that's yeah. interesting to have that piece, but then also to recognize the lifestyle change yeah. of how eating becomes a lifestyle change of something emotionally, mentally, and physically that you choose into mm -hmm. every day to kind of support whatever it is that you're looking for within your life. Did you see those, that emotional aspect pop up through your um, eating and healing journey at all for you? Yeah, I mean, definitely. And I'm still connect, you know, I still like, I grew up with a, you know, a mother that loved to bake and Mm -hmm. she was always cooking. I mean, my mother was, you know, she had a beautiful garden. I think that's kind of where my love for gardening or food came in. Um, and I don't know, I think, I feel like all our families was so centered around eating, you know, getting together centered, centered around eating. Um, and my mother took cooking classes, interestingly enough, when I was about, you know, nine, 10. So she'd come home and she would introduce us to foods like artichokes, and you know that she the lady that she took from was here in salt lake and the she was japanese and she, so she you know she taught her all this ethnic cuisine and so I, I had this love for food but then you know my mother also loved to bake and my grandfather was like this candy maker i mean at <laughs> christmas time he'd make um the, the best almond toffee in the world and so you know for like from December when my mom would make all these Christmas cookies to, you know, like, I mean, and then Valentine's would come, we'd have Christmas cookies and we had the candy and we, I would just be eating it. And I, I remember getting cold sores and being sick a lot as a kid. I, you know, and just that, that sugar connection, it's still there. You know, mm -hmm. I just, um, I just try to find it through different, uh, avenues like fresh fruit, you know, I mean, just like, right. Like I said, right now is my favorite time because there's all this beautiful fruit, peaches and fresh berries at the market. I mean, it's a beautiful place to go and get, you know, those things, watermelon, just the natural sweetness of that and trying to enjoy that. You know, of course I'll, if there's, you know, we go to a party and there's, I'll have a bite, but I just try not to, you know, sit there, but yes, there's, there's definitely, um, an emotional thing with food. It's hard to separate it. It's, you know, it still is for me today, but, um, yeah, we just do our best. We just try and do our best. And, <laughs> you know, like my, I, I just, I feel like if you buy those things that are addicting, you're going to eat them, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, I mean, my husband, he loves his chips and, <laughs> You know, and I feel like if I buy them, they'll go sit down on the couch and eat them. And I just, you know, it's like, okay, I'm not, I'm just not going to buy that anymore. And then he'll go buy it, you know? And so there's still, you know, we all, I think, mm -hmm. I think we all struggle with it. I don't think yeah. anybody, you know, eats perfectly all the time. And, and that's the thing. I think we, we can't stress so much about it that um because everybody's different you know you're so different from me and mm -hmm. how we eat you know because i you can take one you can take one person who can completely change their diet and go vegan and and become super healthy and then you can take a different person and they can like change their diet and go completely like carnivore where they may have some major gastric you know issues and just you know, I mean, and they may do really well. So it's, I can't, you know, it's, it's hard to say. I just try to show people how to take inflammatory foods out of their diet, the processed foods out of their diet. Um, a lot of those things can be like dairy, wheat, um, sugar, you know, 
those are those are you know those are the, the main ones but some corn sometimes people don't realize the corn especially because it's you know it's genetically modified so you know if you're looking for corn maybe go for organic um but we talk about that a lot in my classes and i i try to you know teach people how they can take you know like we we like our bread right well or, or our baked goods, how you can take a recipe for a banana bread and make it grain free by using like an almond flour and a cassava flour and maybe a, you know, an unrefined sugar. And you can make that vegan if you need to, you can make it dairy free if you need to, and it can still taste just as good. So mm -hmm. yes, we, we struggle, but you know, we can find ways to eat those good things and still, you know, enjoy. Um, and, and not have to worry about it. So that's what I teach, you know, that's what I try to teach. And, and uh, yeah, because it's, again, it's just different for everybody. And as you change your diet, and maybe you've noticed this, um, then you sometimes like, if you stop eating that sugar, then you, then when you go back and eat it again, you kind of notice, you'll notice that you feel different. You mm -hmm. may notice that it doesn't, it's too sweet, you know, as you change your diet, or you take things out of your diet. And I always say, do it a little bit at a time, you know, don't, you know, cause sometimes going full force carnivore or for full force vegan is stressful and that can, yes. that can cause issues yeah. for you as well. Mm -hmm. um, stress is like stress can take you right into autoimmunity if it, there's too much of it, you know, it doesn't, doesn't matter what you're eating. You know, you could be eating the best diet in the world. If you have stress in your life and you can't, you don't find a way to manage it, you know, I think that's been a lot of time. That was a lot of my problem, you know, obviously before, but, you know, I still find, find myself in stressful situations and I'm a worrier <laughs> at heart. You know, I really am. So I'm always like, Oh, you know, <laughs> but no, that's, that's, so that's, you know, yeah, I think there's an emotional aspect to it, but just all, you know, got to do our best. And then if you're trying, you know, there are many great, sometimes going to a functional medicine practitioner can, you know, kind of help you get to more of your root causes of what's happening as opposed to, you know, a doctor who's going to say, we'll take this medicine, which will mask a symptom, but I'm telling you food. And if you just Google natural ways to hit, you know, natural ways to heal GERD or, you know, um, or holistic ways to heal GERD or, and just start research, researching yourself because I find that, um, some of the people who have had major illnesses have just found it for themselves on how to heal their bodies. And so, yeah, that, you know, I think that the, the doctors, a lot of, a lot of the doctors have a lot of good information, you know, now, but you know, that's not their main focus when they're in medical school, they don't get their main focus isn't on food. Um, mm -hmm. That's what sustains us and gives us energy and keeps us alive. And um, so, yeah. I like the element a lot of like being your own investigator as you know, all of us, our bodies are all so different. Like you mentioned before that just cause one thing works for one person doesn't mean that it's going to work for the next person based on emotional, mental stressors, like your body. There's so many elements yes. that are going into that that are different for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I've tried all the diets. I really have, I've, <laughs> I've, you know, and so I, I feel like, um, and it's a great way to invest. It's like, Oh, let me, let me try this. I mean, there's so many different diets out there. It can be confusing to be honest. Um, you know, I mean, I've done paleo, I've done, you know, eat right for your blood type. I've tried them. Cause I'm like, Oh, you know, like I'm an O blood type and it tells me, you should probably eat a little meat in your diet. I feel better eating a little meat in my diet. Is this, is this, is this for real? Is this good? Is this, you know, maybe, but, um, but those are, you know, I've done, you know, the FODMAPs, which mm. kind of interesting. I don't know if you know that diet, but you have to take certain sugars out of your diet. I've done the um, lectin free diet, <laughs> which <laughs> takes a lot of like the nightshades and the, you know, just to see how I feel. I I've decided I can't do that one. Cause I love tomatoes too much. I love, you know, potatoes. I love, eggplant. I love all the summer vegetables, but, <laughs> but you can make it, you, you could take a tomato and skin it and take the seeds out and you, you could make it lectin free. So I guess I could do it that way, but yeah, I'm mm -hmm. always, I'm always kind of investigating and still trying to this day 
because you know i i have i do actually have a hiatal hernia i think i've had it since sienna and i just have to be really careful of what i eat it's it's um you know it is food related too it's part of your stomach you know so i yeah i can't i can't like you i can't eat a lot of fat i can't eat a lot of um fried foods either i'll mm -hmm. notice it right away so yeah as you get older i mean i think when you're young you can kind of eat everything but if you know if you can start them early and eat them well you know eventually you know they say if you eat one thing 14 times you'll eventually develop a liking for it. And I feel that's mm -hmm. why I like so many foods is because my mother had a garden and I ate beets and beet greens and broccoli. And I, and, you know, so I always am trying to teach that into my class with people who have children who have, you know, or people who have, you know, picky children, because sometimes that's a really big issue. I'm just like, try it in a different way and just keep trying, just do it, you know, maybe with some cheese on it. I don't know. Um, <laughs> you know so what are some of your favorite things about gardening and being one with harvest? Um, well, this year, I, you know, you have to be out there kind of every day tending to it. And so it does take time, but yeah, I like to go out in the morning. Like my dogs wake up early. They want to go be outside. And so it's just what's been kind of fun for me as I go out there, I take my shoes off. I kind of, you know, get one with the earth, a little bit of grounding. Um, I feel good when I do that. You know, if the sun's popped out, I try to like sit in the sun a little bit and just get that first morning sunlight, um, you know, and then just seeing, I mean, just seeing the growth and seeing, you know, what's, like I said, becoming magical in my garden and, you know, what's working and what's not and you know how I what what I'm gonna have to do to change it. I mean, like this year, I've never planted a potato in my life, but I'm like I'm gonna I'm gonna plant a potato. So I went to um, Wasatch Community Gardens, and they have great classes on um, gardening. But they they have a plant sale in May, and so it's great. I went and I got a bunch of things. And I got some little potatoes, and um, and then I went online and watched their video on how to plant potato. Like I'm just educating myself on how to do this. I don't have anybody teaching me, but you know, they're like dig a six inch hole, put a little bit of peat moss, put a little bit of blood worm. You know, I would have never done that had I not watched this video. So I'm kind of teaching myself, but I planned, I planned these potatoes like purple, red, and magically there's potato. I, to me, it's just, it's sort of magical that I grew this, you know, <laughs> thinking, okay, you know, if you, if you have a little, you know, bit of education on how to do something you can do it you know i mean i guess i could have just thrown the potatoes in there and tried but um yeah teaching myself i'm still like i i got a few things that i had no idea what they were and and they're growing and i'm like what in the world is this and i'm and i couldn't <laughs> find the um the tag that i put in there and i thought it was just like a squash well it ended up being like a a queensland blue squash and it's like this beautiful, it turns like this beautiful blue color and then it's got really orange inside and you can eat it. Um, and at first it was growing nothing for, I mean, up until about like a month ago, nothing. I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess it's just not gonna grow but then it started growing. And so it's just been fun to watch the transformation and things happen. And, you know, I'm having some weird thing on my squash I've got a butternut squash over there. I don't know. I, somebody said it's probably mildew and maybe I'm overwatering, but yeah, learning how to do it. And so hopefully next year things will get better. <laughs> Your Instagram page has so many beautiful and magical recipes. There is one that I was very intrigued by oh. uh, banana eggs. Is it what it sounds like? It is amazing actually and that's so funny that you say that because when we when we first moved here in 2000 i think it was 2017 we my whole my husband and i and my daughter decided to try a, like a um, whole 30 and it's a diet where you take kind of everything out of your diet and you eat kind of meat vegetables light fruit you know no alcohol no sugar no dairy no wheat um but we just wanted to i don't know it was just like let's try to do something different I got my daughter involved in doing videos. And so she would, I would kind of create the food and she was 11 at the time. So she'd do the video. 
but um but banana eggs came from actually a gal. It was my creation. It's um, kind of a Whole30 recipe. This, this gal started creating called, um, what's her, Whole, The Whole Smiths, I think is her. Her name's Michelle Smith and The Whole Smiths. And so she wrote a cookbook, um, but that was one of her signature dishes. And so I was like, we're going to make this. And, you know, it kind of takes, it's, it's actually delicious and you can eat it like an oatmeal to be honest it's like got the protein and the sweetness so you can pour a little bit of um you know dairy or your almond milk or whatever and throw some berries in there and actually a great great recipe so it wasn't my recipe but it was definitely you know one that we did and you know i still do today um my mom we were living at my mom at the time when i was we were doing those recipes and it it does kind of like you got to have like a nonstick pan or really kind of <laughs> destroys your pan. It likes to stick. Um, and my mom was like, oh, banana eggs again. I was like, oh, sorry, mom. But, <laughs> yeah, though, we yeah, it's a great recipe. You should try it because and that's the thing, like trying different things I um, that you've never tried before is always you know, fun. And, and then you get kind of, I mean, again, you keep trying them, you, you develop a flavor for them, maybe not liver, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it is fascinating how it's really taken off and people are, but it is very nutrient dense. It has all the B vitamins, all the amino acids. It's just, just got, you know, a, a, but a lot of people just take it as a supplement now because they can't eat it. It's a little, you know, Mm -hmm. a little chewy. It's yep. got a weird flavor. <laughs> what are your personal favorite magical dishes that are your go-tos that you like to mash up? Oh gosh. Well, I, I love making salads. I, I say I'm kind of, I feel like I'm the queen of salads because I love to make homemade dressings, but, um, mm. Salads are sort of my go-to. Um, I like right now I'm making, you know, I've been making it's 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 something that you can just have where you can just pull out and have. I never dress it. I always like make it up, have it in the fridge. I do make my own dressing, but a dressing can be so simple. It it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, um, you know, 12 ingredients to make it. You can just use lemon and olive oil and salt and pepper. Um, and then if you just add, you know, the thing about salads is there's so many great magical things you can add nuts, seeds, um, you know, some berries, you know, there's just, if you look at my website, I do have a lot of egg dishes and, and salads. <laughs> and I'm like, I go back, somebody mentioned that, like you do lots of eggs. I'm like, I do because I feel really good eating them. I usually eat them every morning. Um, and like, you know, so I create a lot of things, but so maybe eggs and salad are my, my go-tos, but, um, you know, and soups, I love soups too, because again, you can just kind of throw a mishmash of things in, you know, and especially right now, like zucchini, I, I make a great soup. It's like a blended soup, but it's, you know, it takes an onion, some zucchini, some zu potato, maybe you have some greens put it in with some broth, onion, garlic, and then you blend it up and you have this like great little green soup. It's, but you know, mm -hmm. salads. Yeah. Maybe, you know, if I were to ever open a restaurant, it would be soups and salads probably. <laughs> when you open it up, let me know. Cause I okay. love a colorful, beautiful salad and soups oh. are, I love them during the fall, but all year round fall though is my go-to like, cause yeah. it's just so comforting and harvesty and warm and yes. Day. And well, I feel like, um, again, they have so many great things in them that are nourishing. You know, you can do broth. Broth is really nourishing in a soup. Um, and even a veggie broth, you know, can be nourishing. I mean, just in general, when we're sick, that's like the first go-to is, you know, grab that chicken and roast it and cook, you know, put, put in our water and maybe I don't, I just put the bones in and some water and cook it. And, um, just the broth is just amazing. Chicken soup for the soul. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Love chicken soup for the soul and soups. We're going to turn it to the inner child question segment. Are you ready, Hillary? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. First question. Yes. What was one of the first dishes 
that you attempted to make when you were a teenager? Uh, you know what? I think it was probably like Orange Julius. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I want to say it was probably an Orange Julius and it was at that time, you know, it was like you take the concentrated orange juice, milk, sugar, vanilla, blend it up. Delicious. Right. Um, and we made, I think I made those a lot. I just loved them and I still love them to this day. And, um, but now it's, they look a lot different, but, um, I, I make it with just fresh orange and maybe, you know, some almond milk and, or, you know, sometimes I'll just throw in almonds and water and maybe some, um, banana that would sweeten it up and have, you know, and vanilla, a little vanilla. And so, yeah, it looks different, but that is one I, I do love those drinks. I mean, I think, and I think we used to go get them all the time when I was little, but, um, and that and Frosties, my mom took us to get Frosties. <laughs> <laughs> Orange Julius and Dairy Queen. I have fond memories when I was a teenager of both of those places. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I don't think I'm, I'm probably quite older than you, but we went to um, Wendy's a lot and, I, and Burger King, like Bur they got a Burger King. We I lived up in Logan and I remember the first Burger King. My mom took us there. Um, we lived in Salt Lake here for a while, and then we moved to Logan because my father worked at Bear Lake, and so I spent a lot of time up at Bear Lake. But Logan was a little late to get things, so so <laughs> anyway, we you know it was probably wasn't as bad then as it is now. <laughs> but yes. Second question: What are your favorite fruits and veggies when you were a kid? Um. Well, speaking of Bear Lake, we would, um, up at Bear Lake, they used to, you know how it's the raspberry capital of the world. And as a youngster, we would um, go pick raspberries. And with my mom, we'd go pick them and she'd make, you know, all the raspberry jam. So that was a big thing that we did. Um, now they don't have any raspberry picking up there, which is so sad, but um but I love, I love raspberries and vegetable. I probably have to say corn. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. corn was one of my favorites and you know, the sweet, it was sweet. So I loved corn. I kind of loved all vegetables though. Yeah. I don't know. That's weird. That's weird as a child, but again, my, even beets, like I loved beets and my mom just grew them. So did you like, just like, eating them from the ground, like washing them, eating them raw or boiling them on specific veggies or both? Um, my mom always, my mom always steamed the beets and the beet greens. And then we put lots of butter and salt on them. And mm -hmm. actually that's a great way to eat vegetables. It, the, the fat, which, you know, helps you and you could, you know, again, it helps you assimilate the vegetable and it digested a little bit better than if you were just to eat the plain vegetable, ironically. And you don't need a lot of butter, but just a little. And so that's what I say when I when we get back to how our grandparents ate, you know, it's just we've been told over, you know, like fat is bad for us and butter is bad for us when actually, mm -hmm. you know, it's not. <laughs> it's actually, you know, something, especially, you know, if you source a good quality and so just having a little bit, it's great. So yeah, I guess I would, I guess I would mostly steam them. Um, you know, if it was a carrot, I'd probably eat it or a green bean. I'd probably eat it fresh, but um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of, you know, those are the things she grows. Tomatoes, she grew a few. We had, I think we had a few fruit trees. I think we had, a, I think we had an apple tree and a pear, mm -hmm. maybe a peach, you know, peaches are also one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, but like pies now. You're saying apples right. and peaches and cherries and raspberries. I'm like thinking pie. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yes. It's yes. time for pie. I know. <laughs> yes, I, I love pie too. In fact, I just bought a bunch of apples and a bunch of peaches. And tonight I have a class that I'm doing a, a peach crisp. Oh, 
Mm -hmm. it's, it's an easy one though. It's kind of fun. It's not, it doesn't, it's not labor intensive. So, and it's healthy. <laughs> Each crisp clasp. Now, do you do the a la mode? Do you like to do like the ice cream on top of your warm pie? Or do you I like do. it? I like, I kind of like it all. Ice cream, mm -hmm. whipped cream. Um, sometimes if I'm, you know, like trying to stay healthy, I'll get a, you know, like a coconut yogurt or a Greek yogurt and throw that on top. So especially in my classes, I, I feel like, you know, a recipe, I always say this is, is a guideline. So, you know, if you can't eat dairy, then, you know, try a, you know, a coconut milk ice cream or, or if you can't, you know, have the, um, I don't know if you can't have any nuts, which sometimes people can, mm -hmm. you know, then try, you know, a different milk. I mean, it's just, or, you know, whatever whipped cream there's, there's some great nowadays there's just really great alternatives to everything. So you can find most, you know, different things. And I, it's kind of fun to discover new things too. <laughs> yeah. With everything that you've tried so far, Hillary, what would you say is the oddest food combo that you've liked and tried, or you've just tried? Mm, <laughs> that's a good one. Um, oddest food combo. Huh? <laughs> Maybe banana eggs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know. I, one thing that I had when I was in um, living, I traveled from Fresno to Santa Cruz and there was this place called the garlic shop and they had garlic ice cream. And, um, and actually it was like interestingly good uh, for, you know, huh. for, for being garlic ice cream. They have a huge garlic festival. If you love garlic, they have a really great garlic festival um, in Gilroy and Gilroy is like the garlic capital I think of the world and it's just on your way from Fresno to Santa Cruz. And then they have this garlic shop, but they have it all. They have everything garlic, but uh, you know, garlic and vanilla ice cream was that like, that was how, you know, it was a vanilla flavored mm -hmm. garlic ice cream. Interesting. <laughs> that definitely is like a very interesting combo that I want to try. Cause it sounds so interesting and like foreign to put together, but it's intriguing yeah. me. <laughs> I think when I started cooking too, like, you know, pizza with all these things like fig jam and goat cheese always was like, mm -hmm. that seems so weird. But once you taste it and like some caramelized onions on that, that was just like the most magical taste, you know, big jam. And, and, and like I said, for, you know, that area is like known for like their pomegranates and their figs. And so we were always trying to, in fact, I had a fig class called getting figgy with it and just, you know, <laughs> trying to create things um, with figs. It's really fun. So I love that so much. <laughs> yes. We had to be creative to get people there. <laughs> uh, always, always. Yes. Before yeah. we end today, Hillary, can you share some advice with our listeners and viewers on what living a creatively abundant life means to you? Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, if you've listened to this, my journey, um, you know, I think I've sort of stepped out of the box and tried different things at, you know, at maybe an age when you normally wouldn't do something like that. And I just feel like you can do anything at any age that you want to. I mean, who knows? Maybe when I'm 60, I'll, you know, become a yoga teacher. I don't know. I mean, I just feel like there's... There's so much in the world to learn. And, and, and that's what I'm really trying to do now and focus on is like, you know, if you want to learn how to play guitar, learn how to play guitar. And maybe my mom taught me those things because she was, you know, again, she took cooking. She was always doing creative things. And uh, and so I'm thankful for that. And, you know, now I'm trying to do that with my daughter. Like we just went on a foraging adventure up in the Uintas and learned about plant medicine and what we could forage and, you know, and that was really creative and fun for me. I mean, you know, now I got to see if I can go up, you know, like we saw elderberries, which, you know, that's a great immune boosting food. Well, you know, you buy a bottle of that and that's like 30 bucks. Well, I could go just up to the mountains and get them and make it myself, which was really, really fun. So I think 
step outside of the box at any age. You can be creative. You can learn something new. And, um, you know, don't be afraid um, to try try different things, you know. And, and my, I wanted to say this because uh, growing up as a kid, my dad and mom, my mom, my dad was a great salesman and he had this book. It's called um, Fill the Fear and Do It Anyway. And I think the author's name is Sue Jeffers. Have you read that book? Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, so I just, I've tried to carry that through my life a little bit because I'm, I'm sort of an introvert, even like today doing this, I'm like, oh, you know, it's, <laughs> I'm, I'm an introverted extrovert. Like when I, when I get to share things that I love, I think maybe I come out of my shell, but I'm still, you know, I'm, I've always, I was always scared of talking in front of people. Um, in fact, I hate, I was like, do not make me talk in church. I do not want to talk in church. <laughs> probably one of the reasons I didn't want to go. It's like, don't ask me, you know? And um, so I just think you have to step out um, of your comfort zone and do things. And, and that's kind of what I did. And then it becomes easier and easier and easier as you do it. You know, my first cooking class, I was scared to death. My first like TV show doing, you know, I mean, my lip was quivering. I was trying to, you know, talk about food. I mean, you know, you, but as I kept doing it, it got easier. So I don't know if I can do it. Anybody can, I think. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here with us, Hillary. It has been a delight to chat with you this afternoon. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Where can our viewers and listeners find you if they have any questions about your recipes or your classes? So I post a lot of my recipes on Instagram mostly, but I'm always, um, you know, just message me through Instagram, which is blissful.bites.by.hillary. And, um, and, you know, message me about recipes. I, I'm always willing to share everything. I'll email you um, if it's not on Instagram. I kind of, that's kind of where I post everything now. I guess eventually I'll be official. I, I keep telling myself that I need to like get a website where my recipes all are. But um, yeah, I need somebody. I need a, I need a person to do that for me. <laughs> High five. I'm right there with you, Hillary. Me too. Are you, I feel like I'm, I miss the like technological era where, you know, you learn how to do all that stuff. I just, I don't know. I guess my daughter might be able to teach me. <laughs> I have a 15 year old myself and she yeah. definitely is the one that teaches me all the technical stuff now. Cause they teach that or they learn about that in class, which I never learned that, yeah. in high school, but they're teaching that now. And so She's way ahead of me. <laughs> oh, good. That's awesome. Oh, well, you'll have to bring her to a class one of these times, too, if she's interested. That's fun. Well, yeah, no, I my daughter's kind of the same. In fact, this is a new computer that we're using. And I was my daughter pretty much set it, set the whole thing up. And <laughs> um, I was so I was like, I hope this works. So <laughs> hooray, teenage daughters. <laughs> Well, much love to you, Hillary. Uh, thank, thank you so again much, for Hillary. being here. And for those who are listening and also watch today, go about the rest of your week, look around you, find the things that are working within your life, and remember that you get to create your own story. Well, we will see you right here next Monday at 12 o'clock p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Take care, all. Thanks, Hillary. Bye.